peasants and groundlings, lurkers and lovers. Welcome to Hang with Hillary. Come on and let's hang. Everybody, I'm the, I'm the, uh, I'm David. I'm, I'm here to help. I'm the sidekick. David Mildo, my co-host and sidekick. Welcome to Hang with Hillary. We're so happy to have you here, you guys. Um, we This is only our third episode, so we are really, really happy you're here to us today. If you're joining because you follow because of Sign with Robert, so I'm thrilled you're here. And if you have no idea what I'm doing, I'm signing. If you want to learn, you can go and check out the videos, signwithrobert.com, and you can learn sign language yourselves. So um, thank you. And we will have deaf um, guests soon. So um, next week, we have um, DeAndre Allen Toole as our guest, who is a fantastic composer. You're going to get to meet him and see he's got a lot of fans out there, I've found. So he's a very, very talented composer. On February 10th, we've got the award-winning actor, Paul Racy, who's in Amazon Sound of Metal. And on February 17th, we have the extraordinarily talented Rosa Lee Tim. We can't wait for her to join us. Wow. So please hit that subscribe button. If you subscribe, we'll be able to let you know exactly when we're airing and you can tell your friends. So go ahead and hit that subscribe. Um, we also, you'll see this night bot popping up. This is a fancy little thing that David taught me where you can do exclamation point commands and it'll show all sorts of things like our list of options. You could do exclamation point Hillary, schedule, Twitch, Twitter. He's still teaching me a lot about that. So this is David Maldo, my co-host, uh, who's That's sitting me. next to me. I'm in Los Angeles, he's in Florida, but actually we are less than six feet apart virtually for your pleasure. So uh, tonight, you guys, you're in for such a treat. Longtime friend, longtime fan. My dear friend Bill Larkin is performing here on Hanging with Hillary, which I can't even believe he is coming on to play live for you guys. I'm going to read his little bio here. Uh, I had to make it little because it can go on for pages and pages. So Bill Arkin is an actor, comedian, songwriter, and pianist who's currently in Chicago. He performed on Comedy Central's Premium Blend, live at the Laugh Factory, the Improv, the Comedy Store, and the Cinegrill in Hollywood. He's also performed at Rose's Turn in New York City, the Riviera Casino and Nightclub in Las Vegas. He performed at the Chicago's Gay Men's Chorus for many years. He released his second album of comedy songs called Knowing Your Audience. Very funny. Uh, it was recorded live at the Green Mill Jazz Club in Chicago, Illinois, and performed for 17 years at Howl at the Moon, dueling piano bar in Hollywood and Chicago, which means he could take any request and play it live. It's kind of amazing. Uh, he was also an award-winning actor who performed at the Mercury Theater in and the Chicago Shakespeare Theater and is currently performing parody song improv on Twitch. So I without much further ado, oh, we're gonna talk about that. And this, we're, we got a lot to talk about tonight. So let's give it up for my friend, funny man, Bill Larkin. <laughs> Oh, hi, Hillary. Hi, Dave. Hey, Hello. good to see you. I didn't Sorry. hear you come in. Hello. Um, it's a very I'm Mr. Rogers happy. feel. <laughs> I'm happy you're able to join us. Uh, uh, it looks like um, you have your own TV show here <laughs> on my show. You've got your show. It's been a dream of my... Th and by the way, I think this does count as a TV credit, what I'm yes. seeing. So if you don't think it's not going on my resume, you're mistaken. It is. On IMDb, I've got it right now. I've got my <laughs> team working on it, and it's going up as that's what happens at Hanging with Hillary. We make things happen. You make star, yeah, it's a stairway to stardom. 
You know what, but Bill, I've always said you should have your own TV show. You're so insanely talented. Have you right. ever Right? I am insanely talented. <laughs> I'm also a little teapot right now, apparently. <laughs> I, uh, you know, when I lived in Los Angeles, you were right. I mean, I'm reaching you from Chicago. And when I lived in L.A., I, I had dreams of like, oh, well, we all do. Of like, oh, get my own TV show. And uh, I never really went after that. I didn't write a spec script. I didn't come up with a grand idea, but I did come up with my own TV theme. That's about it. So you have the theme show, but no script for the show. Exactly. Well, I'd, I'd love to hear it. What would what would your what would the Bill Larkin TV theme show sound like for your own show? What would, would my my TV theme sound like if I had my own TV show and the TV show had its own theme song? What would it sound like? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I could have made that a bit more concise, but I think it would sound something if not exactly like this. There's nothing new to see or do. It's a quiet little town. But in this place, a fresh new face is turning things around. He's the gay, balding, asthmatic. He's making dreams come true. When life becomes problematic, he keeps on shining through. He's looking for guys and making a home now. Inhaler in hand with nothing to comb now. The gay, balding, asthmatic, he's making dreams come true. Oh, and Hillary, Hillary, um, I envision that on a very special episode of The Gay, Balding, Asthmatic, um, I would be walking down the street, okay? So I'm walking down the street on a beautiful sunny day when suddenly uh, a robber, a robber would come up to me with a gun and say, give me all your money. Now, thinking quickly, I would see where the sun is located in the sky and I would move my head in such a way that the sun's rays ricochet <laughs> directly off my bald spot into the robber's eyes and it blinds him. Now remember, he still has a gun but he doesn't count on the fact that I find him amazingly attractive because <laughs> suddenly the huge boner that's growing in my pants knocks the gun right out of his hand. So he starts to run and I run after him and I run and he's running and I'm running, but he's running much faster and I can't catch up. And I'm like, Ooh, asthma. And you now you think he's going to get away, but remember he's blind now. So he just runs into a tree. And then the cops show up and I explain to the cops everything that happened. And one cop comes up uh, up to me and says, well, this cop has, by the way, a bad Irish accent. Well, Mr. Larkin, it seems that you being gay and bald really helped you in this situation. And then I say back to him something that that would turn into my eventual catchphrase on the show. I would say, yeah, but being asthmatic sucks. <laughs> <laughs> And you'd hear you'd hear laughter, and, and, the, and the, just like just like that, Dave. Thank you. And then and 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 the cop would laugh, and I would laugh, and we but we would both freeze like this. And over the freeze, you see the executive producer's name, and that's when you also hear the closing theme. He's dealing with life and dealing with bad hair. He'll suck on your cock and then suck on his Advair. The gay balding asthmatic. He's making dreams come. True. Yeah. Yeah, take oh that crowd. God, you guys. <laughs> that Bill. was awesome. That was warranted. That sound from the crowd was warranted. Absolutely. All right. So for anyone who is interested, that is how you pitch a show. <laughs> right there. Um right. you can That's start right. sending your checks to Bill Larkin. Please. BillLarkin.com, and we're making this happen. Okay, Bill, thank you for that. But you know what? I think you need more than just a TV show. I think like you need a classier place. So if you, you've performed all over the world. You've had you've in very famous living rooms. I'm not going to name drop, but you have been in some places yeah. doing some things. Yeah. But if you were to perform anywhere in the world anywhere in the world oh gosh where would it be what would be a dream place for you to perform now i know this is cliche but it's cliche for a reason because it's uh, so many artists dream i would love to perform at the world famous carnegie hall now 
I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but that's what I would love. Um, but Bill, um, h- how do you get to Carnegie Hall? I've heard this one. Now, see, <laughs> Dave's young, but he's this is this is the the the, the popular phrase goes. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. But I like I like to think, included with that, there's a second way to get to Carnegie Hall, and that is possibly just being on Hanging with Hillary. Hey, now. Ooh. I try- hey, Bill. That- We're making your dreams come true. Is that Carnegie? It's Carnegie Hall. <laughs> they were booing Carnegie Hall. That was supposed oh. to be an awe. <laughs> there we go. There. Uh, Bill Larkin, welcome to Carnegie Hall oh because my. you are deserving. <gasps> oh my gosh, I can see everybody. Hey, can Bill. You You're on screen. I see you. I'm ignoring the audience and waving to you. Hi. Hillary, how hey, did you get Bill? these tickets? These are the best seats I've had of any show ever. Well, uh, you know, I've sniffed it. I know the guy. Oh, there's, I see you. I see you. <laughs> this really is a dream come true. This is amazing. I'm so happy. You deserve this. You deserve this, Bill. And you I, know why? Because you, um, please play us. Um, please play us a song. I would, I would love to know. I would love to share. Uh, the knowledge, just so people can get to know a little bit more about you. Oh, sure. So. I'd, I'd love to, but I, I just can't stop waving. I'm in Carnegie Hall. I don't want to stop. Oh, <laughs> oh well, I, yeah, I guess while I'm in Carnegie Hall, I should perform. Um, well, you you know, Hillary, we've known, we've known each other a while, and you know that I have a twin brother. You knew that, right? I did know that. Yeah, yeah. Who lives here in Chicago now, by the way. And um, the first song I ever wrote, this is going way back, of course, uh, I wrote for my twin brother, and I wrote this for him when he was eight years old. Uh, I was also eight as well, and uh, well, I'll just I'll I'll just perform it. The song is called "You're My Twin." I sing it to him and dedicate it to him, and I'll just do it. Uh, wow, and I'm doing it at Carnegie Hall. I hope I don't screw up. You're my twin You're my twin brother We've always been together Each day of our lives And now I must tell you My one and only twin When I was born, mom and dad were so happy. But then you came out too, and they cried and cried because they only wanted one. And you ruined all their dreams. And we tried to leave you at the hospital, but the doctors made us take you home. Now we're miserable as hell. And we wish you were not living with us. And we thought of throwing you in the dumpster, but of course we can't do that. You're my twin. My twenty, twenty, twin, twin. You haven't got a friend in the world, and you smell like rotten meat. You're all so stupid. My stupid, rotten, meat-scented twin. And you're the reason Dad's always drinking and why Mom is always drinking as well. When you fall asleep tonight, I will cover up your nose and mouth. You will not be able to breathe. And when morning comes, you will be dead. And then mom and dad will see your dead body and will laugh and laugh and be so damn happy because we'll finally have the family we wanted and the world will become a better place. Everywhere we go will be rainbows and lollipops. Everyone will get along with each other. And because you're dead, we'll all throw a party. Everyone will be invited to the party and the people will all bring gifts to the party. And the gifts will be for mom, dad, and me. And you won't have any gifts for yourself that's because you will be dead my twin 
my twin brother oh mom and dad don't love you you're my twin so good so deserved encore encore do another what, i know what that means that means more in another language. Well, I well, sure, I, I could do one more. I mean, you don't perform Carnegie Hall, do one and hit the road. Uh, <laughs> one more. Unless that has, unless that is a show. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's ever happened. All right, this involves some pl uh, uh, props here. <laughs> here we go. This is as carrot top as I get. Um, all will be explained. I wear a hat now. I never have before, but I wear a hat now. I like my new hat. <laughs> I bought it in St. Louis. When I was visiting St. Louis, I walked into this hat store and I tried this one on and the guy at the hat store saw me try this one on and he looked at me and said, ah, oh, dude, that's the one. Dude, that's the one. <laughs> so I wear a hat now. I never have before. It hides my bald spot. It's a little itchy, but it's fine. My mom likes the hat. She said so at Thanksgiving, but she doesn't like the facial hair. I wear a hat now. I wore the hat for a week, and people said, nice hat. And then one day, I just decided to leave it at home, and a friend met up with me, and he said, hey, where's your hat? And I said, it's at home. And he said, don't you like it anymore? And I said, yes, I still like the hat, but I don't feel the need to wear it every day, so today I just decided to leave it at home. And he said, oh, okay, uh, I thought you looked good when you were wearing it. And then he walked away, and he seemed kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> So I wear a hat now. I, I don't know when I want to wear the hat. I mean, I bought it in the winter when the temperature was cold. So I tried this hat on with a pair of 180s. Those are the, uh, uh, the earmuffs. But I thought the hat with the 180s looked kind of weird. So I took this hat off and I put on a winter hat instead. And then I took the winter hat off and I put this hat back on. And then I looked in the mirror with this hat in the 180s, and I thought, well, they don't look that weird together, but other people might think that it does look weird. <laughs> so I took this hat off, and I put the winter hat back on, and then, and then I took the winter hat off, and I put this hat back on, and then I took this hat, put this, took this hat off, and put the winter hat back on, and then took the winter hat off, and put this hat back on, and took this hat off, and put the winter hat back on, and then I said, I'm a grown man! I can wear whatever the fuck I want to wear! I don't know how to dress myself. I wear a hat now. Why do I wear a hat now? I mean, well, clearly I'm enjoying the attention. I said, clearly I'm enjoying the attention. Do you have the sound effect? <laughs> oh, I meant applause, but no, it's fine. But you only, you don't wear a hat for the, the, you don't wear a hat for the attention. Wait, you don't wear a hat just for the attention. You wear, you wear a hat, you wear a hat because you like the way it looks and not for the attention. If I really wanted to do something for attention, I would go out on the street right now and I would scream at the top of my lungs, what the fuck is happening to the country? Why don't we put our cell phones down, do something about our problems? Why would I care about anything Donald Trump had to say? Why am I even saying his name? Why do we suddenly have a problem with Nazis? Do we always have a problem with Nazis? Why are people still not wearing masks? What the fuck is happening to the world? But I don't do that now. I wear a hat now. I never have before, but I wear a hat now. I like my new hat. I'm a guy who wears a hat now, but not all of the time. I see it in the mirror. 
and it makes me feel good and in 2021 anything that makes me feel good is good so I wear a hat now again, again. Again, this is unprecedented and deserved. Oh, my heart, my heart. Oh, my heart so again. good. Oh. David, let's talk to Bill. Let's bring him up to the Carnegie Stage Hall. My God, another round of applause for my friend, oh. Bill Larkin. You know, I've heard those songs dozens of times, I have to say, and they still make me laugh every single time. I appreciate that. We look like we're about to judge the most prestigious American idol ever. <laughs> think we should like it's not just the, the the top three or four it's like of all time like kelly clarkson would be here jennifer hudson it's like we're choosing the ultimate but can know? we all like, be the mean one are. instead of having one mean one let's all three be the mean one. Oh yeah we're all gonna be asses <laughs> that comes with the territory Good. like yo yo ma's competing <laughs> yes uh, um um i'm blanking on the gymnast's name oh, just, uh, just yo yo ma yeah, just only, the, only all your mouths competing. <laughs> I have a bunch of questions, but we've got one really good question from the crowd. Um, just one, huh? By the way, do you see all the nice people in chat? We got two Badoods, Everyone. we got Trisha, we got Lisa. Oh, got Stuart's here, Lisa's fans here. here. All right, for those of you who uh, don't know, Bill has been doing this parody Twitch show mm -hmm. where uh, people come up with. Um, a title and then they they give them the parody title on the spot it's brilliant you should all see it but oh. um, they want to know how did you come up with the idea for parody twitch so uh and again hillary uh, us going back as far as we do i used to be in theater sports comedy sports you know did an improv back in the 90s so there would be opportunities to of course make up songs but sometimes we're going to a while we do a, a parody one and now again, that was the 90s, but uh, I was doing Howl at the Moon and your, your regular piano bars where you performed to Billy Joel. And I did that for most of the time afterwards as a career. So during this weird time we find ourselves in, I've been able to like put them both together kind of and just take the pop songs I know and go back into improvising. And it was very nerve wracking because I had seriously not done it since the 90s to make up, you know, really done improv. Um, and so, like I was saying to you, like our first show, the first few shows, we're not good uh, <laughs> at all. And if you want to see the bad, bad shows, they're online. I don't know why I haven't taken them off. But um, yeah, because now I'm working I'm, the evolution. And that's the whole thing. The that's true, too. And that's what we like to talk about here on Hanging with Hillary is the right. evolution of an artist. Now, have you, you've obviously been playing piano like your entire life. But when did you start infusing comedy into your music? Man, I. Uh, and to pinpoint the exact, and it actually would probably be during, like, dur again, we go back to the 90s. I used to work at Disney World in Orlando, Florida. And oh, for, the, nice. for a period, yeah, a period, like, improv was my job. For two or three years, I did it at, uh, during the day at Disney MGM Studios, which is now Hollywood Studios, and SAC Theater Comedy Lab, which was the theater sports branch in Orlando, still is. Uh, they do improv up there at night. So I would do... I would play a character at Disney World who made up songs, and then would, I would go to a comedy theater and make up songs, and that was my, from like 1994 to 1996, that was my job. That's so much fun. Um, but, but even before that, I had Tom Lehrer albums in my house, um, and I was familiar with Alan Sherman, and I'm sure a lot of us listened to Dr. Demento, and so I had heard a lot of these. Wasn't writing back then like Weird Al was at a very young age, but... Yeah, it wasn't until that time. Weird Al right here. So, you know, this is not the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, oh yeah, he was a, definitely an inspiration, just like Lehrer and Sherman and uh, Stan it's Freeberg, brilliant. of course. There's so many, so many. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. Your brand of humor, I feel like it's, it is an amalgamation of all these great comics, like you've said, but you have such a unique style with your dry, wry sense of humor where it's so much fun coming to your shows because no matter how many times I've seen it, you'll see people at the beginning because you start off very seriously, right. usually a lot of your songs and you see their faces like they're trying to figure it out and it takes a moment for their minds to catch up with their ears. That's how I 
I can relate to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realize there's a show here at the, we're not doing it right now, of course, because of the lockdown, but it's called The Paper Machete, and it's a show that's done at the Green Mill in uh, a jazz club here in Chicago. And that's become my new creative playground where I bring in songs about the week's news. But I, I realize I follow that format where it's like, well, this could be serious, and then it's not, you know, uh, and try to play around with that a little bit. But, um, and it is weird doing topical news you know, songs about the news because I never yeah. used to go that route. So well, trying to make sense of everything through this is actually good therapy in a way. If that makes I sense. could see that. I could like, you know, Randy Rainbow has been. Oh, like, my gosh. A cultural national treasure. They're the best. Sense. And so I think we need our comedy. I think we need our music. So like. Agreed. We need you. Um, you know what, though, I think, David, I think we need to continue this conversation, but I think we should head on over to the bar oh. and like, have a little drinky poo. Are they open, the bars? Oh. Well, let's leave Carnegie Hall. But <sighs> congratulations for performing your debut. Thank you. Bye, Carnegie. <sighs> oh. Now we wait for the reviews to come in. Now we just play the waiting game. That's what you do, right? <laughs> After a New York show, you go to the bars and wait for the reviews. <laughs> Oh, God. Yes. And back in the day, back way in the day, you would, you would wait until they printed a newspaper and you would wait for that to get delivered. Right. Um, yep. And I think there were a lot of plays about that where someone would run in with Variety or New York Times with, it's a smash hit. We're going to run forever. Or, ah, it's a turkey. We're going to fold. And I look like that, like the, that newsie like with this cap on. The X famous. X yeah. <laughs> the famous. It's actually a famous uh, uh, Charlie Brown comic trip where then Snoopy goes, how do you fold a turkey? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. By the way, I'm just going to take a second to uh, look at you, Hillary. And then look at Dave. No, I looked at Dave. I'm looking at you, Dave. And now I'm looking at you, Hillary. You have to realize we are... We are in three completely separate states making this happen in our bar. Thanks to the magic of... Yeah, Pacific. And... Midwest and the Eastern, we're all represented. We are. We are represented. <laughs> it's magical. I mean, speaking of magical, uh, you talked about your pivot of playing live every week in front of the masses, the teeming masses in Chicago. And I know you've migrated to Twitch, which is brand new to you. Can you, um, how has that been? And you know, David could probably speak to this because you're on Twitch a lot of, you're on. I'm a vet. <laughs> you're on Twitch a lot of the time. David. Um, everybody, I think, kind of classifies it as a, a, a platform for young people. Now, and I think we should make it clear, it is. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it is also a, what I'm discovering, a wonderful platform to really first monetize, first to build your audience because people are invited from other shows to come see you. So what Twitch has that a lot of these other platforms don't is that kind of capability. So you start out small and you, and like anything else you, you build. So, uh, yeah, I just moved parody song improv from Facebook to Twitch and still do some on Facebook because everybody knows how to work Facebook, no matter who you are. Um, but there's a lot of perks to, to being on Twitch again, that did could describe better than I could, but, it's a fascinating learning curve, I'll say. David, for our viewers out there who may not know what Twitch is, they hear this Twitchy Twitch, can you give them the elevator? <laughs> I did it three times. Can you give them the little short, can you give an explanation to the people who are like, I, I don't, I can barely figure this out. Yeah, yeah. You know, Twitch is amazing because it's, it is the biggest streaming platform on the planet, but nobody our age or over has, has even heard of it. Um, it, it started I out with that comment. Yeah. It's it's true, you know. Ask you know ask ask your nieces and nephews is is what I say because I, I <laughs> my my niece my nieces and nephews are on it. Um, so it started out as a totally as a video gaming site, and it still largely is. It was before Twitch. It was called Justin TV, and now it's it's at Twitch TV. It's not Twitch com. And what it is 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 uh. <laughs> it, 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 there are they're like video game athletes. There are people who are so good at these video oh. games that other people will watch them play a video game. Well, why would I watch somebody play a video game? Well, why would I watch somebody play a basketball game? I'm not that good at basketball. I want to watch someone good play. So it's the same. It's the same kind of thing. And and they became very big. And and so what they do is they put themselves in the corner, 
and they have the the whole screen is the video game. And as they're playing the video game, they're giving commentary and they're watching the chat just as I am right now. Hi, Tuba. Hi, Erica. And so it becomes very interactive as they're playing. And it became very, very big. Just thousands and thousands and thousands of streamers and millions and millions and millions of viewers. And some people started getting creative and doing other things on Twitch. And at first it was like, hey, this is for video gamers. You know, go somewhere else. But then they started welcoming it. And one of the biggest communities is their music community. They, they yeah. also um, they have something called Just Chatting, which is also pretty big. People doing shows kind of like this or just, just talking. But I've seen there's art streams. There's cooking, a lot of really good cooking oh, yeah. streams. Right? Yep. There's all kinds of stuff. But music is, is one of the really big ones. And a lot of musicians from people like me who are really still learning their instrument to people who have been playing their entire lives uh, at every level are, are and- on Twitch. And what is your uh, cha- Twitch channel again, Dave? Because everybody, he, he, he does gaming and performs music, both. Uh, so what, what is the name of your channel? Mine is Boom So Much, because you Boom have so to have much. a, well, you don't have to, but a, a lot of people have a, you know. Well, you have to. Well, you don't. <laughs> so I guess <laughs> you don't have, you have to. to. <laughs> um, oh, David, at Boom So Much, we put it in the chat. Oh, um, oh there we go. Yeah, the night boom. And then, Bill, what is your Twitch Mine uh, is same as the Facebook. It's Bill Larkin Music. So you sh- and, and most of the time, if not all the time, but if the musicians on there, they might end with music. So it's abundantly clear to everyone. Yeah, you just if you go to Twitch and search for music, you'll find a lot of stuff. And and one of the things I really love about it is is the community. And you don't see a community like this on on YouTube or on Face. I mean, you see communities, yep. but it's it's really different. It's um, it's supportive. A lot of communities, a lot of the gaming communities are toxic. That's what the kids say, toxic. Because uh, you know you play a game, and if you're not good, everyone's mean to you, and everyone hates everyone. Yeah. But the music community on Twitch is just full of love. Oh. People supporting each other. It's you, the best, isn't it? You think it'd be competitive, like you know, oh, I'm a guitarist, and he's a guitarist. He's taking my viewers. He, I'm, he's playing at the same time as me. I'm gonna say bad things about him. But instead, it's like people show up in each other's streams and say, "Hey, I'm here watching you. You're amazing." Uh, the raids, right? Everybody will raids. raid another oh. show right after they see your show and then you're meeting <laughs> all these new people who will watch you, but you're getting to see their shows and they're always amazing and like you say, David, the, the most complimentary like you said, sense of community. Oh. Everybody's yeah. it's it's amazing. Let me let me explain what raiding is really quick and I don't want to go too nerdy with this, but raiding is something that the community built that that Twitch added into the platform. They made it part of the of the of the service because well, what happened was someone would end their stream and you end your stream, you click the stop streaming button and everything goes away. And there's a little thing that says, thanks for watching. And, and everyone, where do they go? And if you have a thousand people watching you, where do they go? They look for someone else. So people found a way to support each other. They said at the end of the stream, when I click end stream, everyone go watch this person. I'll put their links yes. in the chat. Yes. And people were doing it and they made it such a, uh, they made it part of the thing. Now, when I end my stream, Instead of pressing the end stream button, I do a command to raid someone. And if you're watching my stream, you're sitting there watching me. And the next second, you're watching someone else. So so it's literally like it, I, I like that I used to live in New Orleans. And, and on the same block, there'd be four clubs. And there'd be music yeah. playing at all the clubs. And sometimes when one band would stop playing at three in the morning, everyone would say, hey, let's go across the street and see the, the brass band on the other side of the street. And the people on the other side of the street, there's 30 people there. Now there's 60 people there. Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. bigger party. Everyone's yeah. happy. And that's exactly the dynamic. We're taking our party over to this other musician. We're taking our guitar party to this piano channel. And, and right. it's exciting. And it's it's just so positive. I'm getting yeah. excited. <laughs> it's addictive. It's, it's, uh, it is fun to watch. I mean, Bill, I was having so much fun. And right. so I do, yeah. you interact with your crowd. And yeah. oh, my gosh, your fans love you as much as I do. And it was so much fun to see your room raided and like 500 people oh. all of a that's sudden. Awesome. Like, you got a big oh, one? Oh, isn't incredible. that the best? Oh, it yeah. Was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. Best. There's a lot of people who, I mean, and you know, you've been a performer for a long time. So, you know, you, you can handle it. But there's some people who they've never played before more than two or three people. And they're playing piano and they're shy. And all of a sudden they get raided and there's a thousand that's people right. watching them. And it's the, <laughs> months later, they're still talking about it. It's, That's it's right. like a life changing kind of feeling, you know. But there so is that curve. It's that amount of time where you're 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 building that audience because it does start pretty slow on Twitch, but it's supposed to because you know people don't know who you are yet unless you already have a fan base coming in. But that's just it. What better way to meet a new audience, something you can't really do on Facebook, than this, where you're invited to see others? It's 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 great. 
It really is. It really is. And they're so nice to us older people. <laughs> <laughs> they did make Very me dye my hair. I, I have, I, you know, well, you can see the roots are coming in. You know, I had my gray hair and they said, no, if you're, if you're going to be a Twitch streamer, you can be bald or you can be blue, you know, or, or green or some ah. kind of crazy color. There, right. You can't just have... But I said, you know, I wanted to fit in like Jane Goodall, you know, with the monkeys, me with the kids. You I'm exactly. learning their ways. <laughs> Just going to use that comparison. I know. I know. Uh, I love her. I love her. Um, She's great. All right. To borrow some clubhouse lingo, I'm going to reset the room now because that oh, has been oh. my obsession. So if you're just tuning in, uh, we're hanging with Hillary. I'm Hillary. And I've got my co-host, David Maldow, and my fabulous guest, Jerry Kirchner. If you're enjoying this, go ahead, hit subscribe. So uh, that way you can be aware of all our upcoming guests. Because next week, we've got the very talented uh, DeAndre Allen Tool, Ooh. who is a co fabulous composer. I cannot wait for you all to meet him. So hit the subscribe so we can let you know about that. And Hillary, uh, your show is every Wednesday at uh, thank you. 5 every p.m. Wednesday. Pacific. 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, 7 p.m. Chicago Folks Central, and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My math's not good enough to let you know in the UK, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. So I've been hanging in Clubhouse. Are any of my Clubhouse peeps are uh, watching the show? I'm going to watch a chat. But in the meantime, uh, oh, for those of you who don't know, Clubhouse is a brand new audio-only platform. Mm -hmm. Where they've got thousands of rooms nothing is recorded so it's, it's happening live and people talk about everything from marketing to film to music to uh they've got people playing live on clubhouse now too nice and some of these rooms check that out are like I thousands do. it's all free uh right now because it is in beta you need an invite or you need to get on the waiting list to come in and listen and same thing communities are being built uh, and it's addictive. Like last night I went on for a couple, and the good thing is cause it's only audio only. I can do things while I'm listening to it. Right. Oh, Susan Diner's here. My producer friend, uh, who was my invite into clubhouse. So thank you, Susan. Yay. And we talk about producing. So last night was badass babes in film. And I was going to dip in for a half hour. I was on that thing till one <laughs> in the morning talking to filmmakers from all over the world so and awesome. oh, oh. It, was, it was so great i'm a little afraid to try it oh it's so <laughs> it's pretty fun after i finish this project i'm on after i finish my secret project i'm getting on too. yeah okay yeah we've got some secret projects which we'll talk about more but um i want to talk about for one moment um Bill, I've been, because you know I try to grab you into every project I can, and I was so happy when I was able to cast you in my second feature, yeah. uh, No Ordinary Hero. Amazing and it was film. a small part, but you came in, and you have such, I, and oh, I'm so sorry we didn't bring the clip in, but um, I can post it if anyone's interested. <laughs> I just had a moment of panic, like, did I forget to set up a clip? Because oh, I don't have okay. a clip set up. <laughs> no, I, I just had a moment of panic of watching myself, <laughs> just watching myself. It's the best thing in the world. Like, oh, my God. Well, you're too kind. Oh, uh, and because I didn't write it, I'm realizing like I, w I was watching you on set going like, oh, he, no, this was too small of a role. I mean, he uh, you were in and it was a memorable scene. I mean, he had a big, chunky scene, but you need you need to be um to be in a feature film and have uh, your through line for thoroughly explored because he's a comedic genius you know the ordinary hero was a wonderful experience and a wonderful film it, it was it was the best and i appreciate you having me a part, be a part of it oh you were so good we were, i was so happy to have you there and it was it was hard because i wanted to, to I, I was pulling people aside um and i was a producer on this but right. i was like you have no idea you guys you have no <laughs> idea what you can do and it was like watching this thoroughbred like trot around the pony track you know and be like you know i need something bigger <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna get you we're gonna get you some more roles for sure Meh. for bigger projects Too kind. um you know what, what david i think it's time for some wishful thinking i wishful think wishful um, thinking yeah i Oof. think like there we Not go. that. Much. Wait, what? What the? I think, I think, Bill. 
I can show you the, no, I can't. I don't know if we can legally perform that. <laughs> well, you know, with the nine people watching, um, <laughs> hopefully one of them is not a lawyer. This is what happens on show three is you have nine people, but I'm so grateful right? for the nine of you. Yeah. So grateful that you're here. And We're I growing. You and play with. But people are watching these after they're filmed live. So um, right. we are growing and moving our way up. But Bill, if you, yep. like when the pandemic is over, like where, where would you go? What would you, what would you do first? Wow. First I would go wanna... outside. Um, I know that's kind of open-ended, but yeah, I'd go outside. <laughs> and uh if allowed, I would hug a stranger. Now I would have to first get the, you know, the okay, because you know we need right. the okay. But I would, I would hug people I didn't know if I thought it was, it was consent, feasible. Bill, consent. Yeah, that's right. All consent. And uh, where and then, would I go? Because during this time, I think everybody's thinking that, like, where would maybe people would travel now to places they normally wouldn't think of going. I've never been to Italy. I've never been to France, and it's like. I, you know, I might as well do that now. So I think those would definitely be options. But no, first, I'm just going to hug strangers. Then I'll work my way to Italy and France. And Erica says you can do 30 seconds legally. I don't know if that means hugging or if the chat's a little behind and that's the I can show you the world. But either <laughs> one, I think, should be legal. I think I can do, I think seven notes might not be allowed, but six notes are. I can show you the... Well, it's five, but let's not let's not do the other one. Let's not push it. Let's not push it here. Hang you know on. what we look like now, actually, is what? like those uh, those villains in the Superman film who are stuck in that pain. Yes. Oh, released uh, at Superman two. We look. If you just look at the square, we're like Neil before <laughs> Zod. Zod. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. What uh, about you, Hillary? What would you do? I want to go back to Paris. You know, back to Paris. Huh? I was there once uh, right after college. I did a whirlwind trip of Europe. Nice. Um, yeah. And it rained the whole time and it was miserable. Ugh. And it was. Uh, yeah. And I I lost my glasses at the one nice meal I, and I don't wear them very often, but like for distance to be able to see like the Eiffel Tower in oh, focus, yeah. like that would be nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Back to Paris. Because why not? I want to sit outside, like you said, hug strangers, mm -hmm. have a cafe, un croissant, some fromage. I think that would be a... No, these are all French words. Yes. They <laughs> are. And I'm I'm grateful for my two, two years of college French. <laughs> Although four, it's so funny. Four years. Four years of French. Où est le livre? Where is the book? Je m'appelle Guillaume. My name is Bill. That's it. <laughs> That's, I swear that's all I remember. But it sounds so beautiful when you sounds say it. Great. Well, that's a given. Yeah. Look who it's coming from. Yeah. Sounds so beautiful. Uh, Jolene's giving more legal advice. Are you a lawyer or a musician, Jolene? Jolene, Jolene. Jolene. No, I'm, it says, I think one. that it is the song. There's no legal time of not consensual touch. <laughs> that's right, boys and girls. There is no minimum legal time or maximum for non-consensual touch that is the most loaded question of the years a, a sentence of the year so far i think <laughs> you know, can, it only, can, no bill it's still only january i can tell a really a really quick little story the last Please. time i saw people in person it was it was a year ago right before the pandemic hit i was at a convention and and i had you know it just started growing out there and it wasn't this dramatically colored but it was a little purple Subtle, subtly, I was starting to go down this road and I was nervous whether I'd be, you know, it's, this is a business environment and, and very few people look like this. And I was talking with some friends and I just met a, a new group of friends yeah. and this, this younger woman who I'm now very good friends with just out of nowhere. And it was so perfect because she didn't compliment me. She didn't say, oh, I like hair. She turned to her friend and said, he has great hair. Oh. And it made me so happy. I said, oh my God, thank you. And I hugged her. Yeah. And then I realized what I did. I hugged a, a woman half my age in a business situation. And I went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. And she started laughing hysterically. She, I mean, it was, you know, it was, she, it was, uh, I, it was always get consent great. beforehand. I got consent after. That's not okay ever. <laughs> it's not, it's not okay. It turned out okay, but it's not okay. 
but, but right as a rule world, yes. it's never okay right. take it from me in the clouds it's I never know. never I'm, I'm still like angry at myself but but <laughs> she says she but i was just so it was such well, a nice thing of her yes. to say yes <laughs> so nice but david you're one of the nicest non-threatening guys ever i think well i'm, I'm a girls i'm one of the girls you are like if you if you came out and like hug me, I would not be mad. And if you don't believe me, you should see me try to throw a baseball. <laughs> I would like if it's allowed to put my arms around both of you. I I, I, I consent. Can, I ha give you my consent. Okay, hold on here. Hold on. Okay, that's a big. It's I don't. There you go. There you go. Where's? Oh, well, anyway, that worked. <laughs> Yeah, well, David pulled a guitar out of my chest, like on the first. That's right. Yes. So, That's not, yeah. yeah, we were still working our green screen uh, out, and I think it was a little bit shocking for people. Um, <laughs> Mostly me. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, he was he wasn't watching what he was doing. Oh, which was <laughs> like, why is so, everyone in chat saying weird stuff? Uh, oh. Exactly. That's what chat hey, is for. David, can you tell everyone quickly how you're doing all this? Oh, you know what? Before we do this, I think we should move on to our cozy cabin so we can have a cozy chat. Speaking of being cozy. <gasps> this oh, this is cozy. I really like the cozy cabin. Where did you get this ottoman? <laughs> where did it come from? Like this first, where did you get it? And then how did it appear from nowhere? You can't see it. Oh, this is my cozy cabin music. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, um, oh, what were we? I was moving the conversation over here because we had. Oh, I know. Yeah. David, can you explain to um, our 11 people watching now how you're doing this magic um, and and how we're three of us are in three different states and yet we're mere inches from each other mm -hmm. on your uh, device of choice that you are viewing uh, hang with Hillary tonight? Yes. And, and you know, for, um, by the way, I just wanted to, I'm, I'm like watching us on YouTube and it looks like, um, hopefully it's just my view that we might be a little bit blurry and low resolution. If we have some sort of issue like that, I will troubleshoot it and fix it for the next stream. I hope it's just something on my end, but that's just me. I have no mic. I'm using my computer mic. So I got a light this week. So that was this week's technical advance. Your lighting looks a lot better. My lighting looks better. And so next week I'll get a mic so I will sound better. We're doing this in stages. We're building. That's good. One thing a show. I try to adapt to that too. Do one yeah. thing every show. Yeah. One thing a show. I see. I usually hire people. I don't do my own lighting and sound when I'm lucky enough to have a show that's going. It's a learning know, process. I am not a professional lighting person. I am not a professional sound person, mm -hmm. but I am doing enough so you can hear and see me on my own YouTube. It's all you know, I think over the pandemic, a lot of us have are becoming that a lot of us are working from home. And even if we're not entertainers and, and, and that sort of thing, just, you know, regular business people, they're doing their work from home and they're being on video all day and they are trying to look good. And, and I think regular people are getting better cameras and better lights and even maybe green screens and stuff. So this, yes. isn't, this isn't just for us anymore. It's, it's a lot of fun. And, and that ties into your question of how we're doing this. Um, oh, thank you, Jolene. Jolene says we look and sound great. So thank you, guys. Oh, Jolene. thank you. Okay, it's just it's just my end here. Okay. Jolene, Jolene. <sighs> Jolene, we were talking about that song earlier. Everything, everything she, she, Jolene loves slash hates that song, but I'll tell you. I that. know. I can't I know. blame you for hating it because I get it. But it's such a good song. It's such a good song. <laughs> it's such a good song. So David, explain to oh, everyone. Yes. It, it actually it connects to what we were talking before, um, which was Twitch. When I first got onto Twitch, my real interest was was playing guitar. I wanted to learn how to play guitar. And most people, when they get on Twitch, their interest is the game. They want to play their game. But how do you connect to Twitch? And there's this free software called OBS, Open Broadcaster yes. Software. Mm -hmm. yes. Everyone, yes. it's it's really powerful, but it was it's a little it's a little hard to get used to. It you know it's not it's not it's not terribly intuitive. It's not unintuitive. But it was really just designed to be this powerful tool. It wasn't designed to be easy. But we all kind of learn how to use it. And most people just sort of put their camera in the corner, put their game behind them, find the start streaming button, and that's it. But I'm a super nerd. So I started looking at all the options and plugins. And pretty soon, um, I figured out how to put people on dragons. <laughs> ah, that's the best. So over the... Um, David, by the way, David was riding a dragon the first time I met him. 
he was uh, makes a good impression. Zoom is one of his clients, and he was hosting a webinar for Zoom on Zoom about oh. doing the OBS platform. And I see this riding on a dragon, and he's making it snow cookies and do a bunch of. And I was like, "How are you doing this on my Zoom? I don't." get it he's like reach out to me i want to like to talk to people and meet people and i was like oh i'm getting in on some david maldo magic so. <laughs> yeah it's it's kind of again imagine if if i came you know if, if jane goodall came back from the monkeys <laughs> and she had goodall. something new that 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 regular people had never saw before they'd be like where did she come you know i came back from the kids and they taught me about something called OBS yes. and all the grown-ups are like what is this OBS i'm like let me show you yeah. so i'm I feel like there's a very small number of people that are using OBS in business, but we all should be. This is the way we should be doing our Zoom meetings. And David was saying about the community on Twitch, not just sharing the show and having others watch you. This whole time, I didn't know anything about the technical aspect of anything before this. Even though I've been working at Piano Bars, I didn't know a thing about it. It is the viewers that primarily taught me how to do everything. It was people They're I so haven't helpful. met yet in person who told me about, here's how you use OBS, here's how, if I'll do a test show online, they'll be the ones that like, you can adjust the camera this way, here's how you get your interface to work. It's all been people who, I can't wait till when we get out of here, they're gonna be the first few people I meet, who, you talk about community, they're they're the ones that made my shows possible in the first place. I just wanted to say that. It, it's what amazing. You, start you just start streaming on Twitch and people show up in your chat and they'll say, yes. you need to fix your lighting. And you'll be like, what do you mean? They'll say, change your angle of this and it's like is twitch paying where where do these people come from is twitch yeah. paying people to uh, come goodness. to my channel and give me tips no they're nope. just people who like doing that goodness so you need to fix your your tint on your camera you need to fix your microphone and, and they just give you advice here lisa can sing and saying it's light reflecting off of bill's mic stand to be oh, precise Lisa's doing it here oh, that's funny Oh, Lisa's saying that Bill looks a little out of focus because the, the focus is on the microphone. He says it suits your personality, so, you know. That's just me. I'm out of focus. I'm in my 50s now, and this is how I look. <laughs> we like that soft filter. It's it's important for... I need the Sybil Shepherd filter, if there's a button for that. <laughs> I need a lower resolution camera. <laughs> well, I need something. But uh, Bill, I'm curious, what was the biggest learning curve for you with all it like learning? I know for me, it's been a challenge getting... I'll just the setup and trying to figure out how to pivot into this. I've never done live streaming before, so this yeah. is new for me. What about you? What was the biggest challenge to and doing? Might, others might relate to the fact that when I, when I started, I only used my phone. So you had this very, oh. you had, it was a sure microphone. I don't know if you know it, Dave, but it was like 150 bucks and you put it into your phone. And all I used was the phone that microphone and a tripod and that was it and i just did facebook and it was possible it works you can do a show that way it's not um, the best view not the best not the best, the best quality in the world like going through but it was like okay i can do this for a spell but of course the spell turned into three months and after a while it was like i should get off my duff and move to the next level but it's like you say it's like we're doing baby steps towards certain things but it's like okay once i've figured this out then i learned the next like obs i was using Streamlabs and saw OBS had some better features. So now I'm learning OBS and because of other shows, I'm relearning QLab. I'm learning all these different things. So you never it. really stop learning all these things. Yeah, just constantly just building and building and building. And and it's funny because it's it's building several things at once. It was building my OBS. Yeah. My first OBS, I had one scene. You know, we see we use scenes yeah. here. So my guitar OBS, I have a lot of scenes in it. My first scene was just showing the guitar. And, and I build a number of scenes and I build a number of uh, I build a bunch of skills working with OBS, but at the same time, I was learning guitar. So I'm playing guitar and I, I was developing my, whatever it is you're streaming. If you're streaming a game or you're just streaming yourself talking, you're going to get better at that. And my confidence, I, I was, you know, I, I, a little online shy. It's actually funny. My, my, my first few streams, I was so shy. I had the camera focused in on the guitar, no face. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't show my face. And uh. I had my guitar. I had the, the, it was opaque, so I was like a ghost. You could see the background, you just see this ghost of a guitar <laughs> as I was playing. And then I got more confident and I got rid of the ghost effect, you could see the guitar. And then eventually I started showing my face and then eventually it was full body, I'm dancing around with the guitar. It, it was, and that evolution of myself, my my online persona came along with my evolution of my, my streaming skills, my OBS skills. 
Incredible. You know what that reminds me of? Uh, for all of you New Yorkers out there, and you'd watch like in the subway stations, you'd have these incredible musicians mm -hmm. who had to rehearse anyways, but they thought, why don't I make a couple of dollars? Why I rehearse? Yep. And the acoustics are incredible. So they'd put a hat out or open up their case for change. And they're like, well, I got to get my three hours in anyway. So you'd have Juilliard students sometimes sit in the subway and practice and rehearse. And like we were treated because your rehearsal is our, like my God performance. And right. it was, that was my favorite thing about, one of my favorite things about New York. Oh, uh, and New yeah. Orleans. When I lived in yeah. New Orleans, the French Quarter, oh, yeah. I saw the same thing. Really quick, funny story. I, I've used that analogy. What we do on Twitch is online busking. That's called busking. When you sit on the corner and play right? music for, for change. And, and actually, if you go to my Twitch channel and you scroll down, I have a picture of a guitar case open up with a few dollars in it. If you click on that, uh -huh. you could donate. It's just like online busking. Andy. And I know, as you know, those online buskers, they're Juilliard students that are that are just doing this to practice. It's more fun to practice in front of an audience. And you see these drummers on, on uh, Tupperware. They have real drum sets at home. They're using Tupperware because they can take it out on the streets. And, and they're amazing, talented. They're brilliant musicians. Yeah. So I was talking to my mom about how explaining what I do on Twitch, and it said that I'm I'm like those people on the street. I'm an online busker. She didn't get that they work at Juilliard. She thought they're homeless. Oh. So she's like, "Oh, so you're like those homeless people begging?" I'm like, "No, they're no. homeless." Nope. Now, she's Bill, you ever do street busking? Did you ever perform anywhere outside with a hat? Uh, I never was like. Uh, uh, I never did. The closest I guess I came to like performing outside and would do like if you're doing a fringe festival, like I did the um, Edinburgh, Edinburgh Fringe in Edinburgh, Scotland, but right. it is, of course, the hugest festival in the world. Right. And I was a newbie. So I went in with the mindset of like, all right, there's a chance nobody's going to see my show. And I went in with that mindset and it was completely comfortable. It's like I wasn't worried about bombing or just just experience the show. So I would basically busk. I would go outside. I would bring a um, uh, I would just sing to people as I brought my ukulele and would make up songs as oh, people were walking down the street and then give a flyer. And you thought, well, if you like that, maybe you'll do that. And I was so nervous, but it's like anything else that we're talking about, about that, com you know, lifting that comfort level off of you and just doing it. Right. Um, but it's such a nap comparison to Twitch, you know, doing like the busking. It's like, it's the same thing. It's like, we're no matter what level you're at in terms of, of performance, you're performing for others and getting a little cash on the side. Yeah, that's a great comparison. Erica just uh, commented, I hope, I hope you put your Twitch info on your YouTube page. So that's for you. I don't do Twitch. I'm I hope we do that too. <laughs> we all need assistance to help us through. We're growing. We're all three of us. We're we're um we're in our pivot stage, and so I like to pivot with uh in good company, which I don't think we could have done better. So I cannot believe we're almost out of time. So David, let's go back to the studio to wrap this up. Uh, oh, that was an hour. That's crazy. I know. Isn't that and the audience is still here. Oh, they, they the left. audience is still here. We picked up another viewer. So now there's 12. Oh, there. I was talking about the uh, in-studio one there. At oh, the, uh, oh, yeah. The talk show yeah. Well, there those... they are. There they are. And that is the right response for, from a, a crowd for, for what I do, at least. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Every so song. If, if you've enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button oh, so oh. Um, you can be reminded for next week. Uh, DeAndre Allen Tool is going to be yes. joining us. 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday. Show here every Wednesday. Um, and you can catch catch uh, Bill on his Twitch and David um, Boom so much on his Twitch. Mm -hmm. So do that. Oh, love Edinburgh Festival. Oh, my gosh. We have to do a whole show about the Edinburgh Festival. Oh, my gosh. That's magical. Thing. Magical. But the best. The best. Uh, I am so grateful you guys have tuned in to watch hanging with Hillary and it was such a pleasure hanging with you guys. So thank you, Bill, for coming on performing and just killing it like you always do. Thank you, Hillary. I love you. I love Eventually, you. Eventually, Dave, we'll meet in person. I appreciate yes. all of it. And uh, <laughs> thank you for this. This was absolutely wonderful. It was so good. So David, again, thanks for being my right hand guy, my Ed McMahon. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you.
until then, we'll, uh, thanks for hanging with me and we'll see you next week. Let's ride us out. So thank you all. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I love it. All right, thank you for hanging. <laughs> <laughs>